we go. Hello, folks. Welcome back. I am the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. I'm here. This is my Young Buck shirt. That means it's, it's one thing. That means it's time for AEW. Wow, AEW almost turned into Lucha Underground for a split second. But, yep, I'll get into that. Um, first, I've got some thank yous out. Let's see here. Soul. You, sir, are a master of the six count. Fox car, you know how to play the air guitar. Velvet Crunch. I forget what you messaged me, but it was funny though. You you're just there jamming out to your briefcase boombox. Toys for thoughts. You sir 
have a similar dirty mind like me, but there's only room for one, you can crawl out of here. Laser Blues, zero one three. Man, you just win by dirty pin all the time. Isaiah Lewis, you so. are very quickly on your way to becoming a member of the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League because you are superior. Four joints, you're just partying there with the El Generico band. However, XX Gang XX, you're a jackass. And with all those thank yous out of the way, let's talk about some AEW. This show went by really quick. Uh, it's weird when you put quality matches in the first hour. It didn't take long at all. They had a bunch of segments, and then they had the tag team match, which rightly took a while. So let's get right into this, folks. Starts off with Wardlow taking on Jungle Boy. Wardlow definitely tends to work that uh, big guy stuff. Um, starts a little bit. Again, Jungle Boy would have to be faster, quicker, obviously more agile than Wardlow. Wardlow's stronger, the ability to toss Jungle Boy around, more, again, brutish and brawlish. Uh, Jungle Boy eventually gets some of the offense in. Um, his big offense gets a Frankensteiner uh, with a back with a, and transitions that right into the backstabber off the other corner. That's good. Again, whenever you do chain wrestling, do one move after another. Make things make sense. It's smooth. Um, and then, uh, oh, oh, those diving knees. Man, I don't care what you say. Landing on someone's chest or even their stomach. Just with your knees. It's amazing that Finn Balor hasn't injured anyone with his coup de gras. It's even more amazing that Jungle Boy hasn't taken out anyone's ribs, especially like floating rib, the floating ribs, the Adam's ribs, with that freaking double knee. That just looks like it hurts. Again, so a, a man's body weight with with the knees, one of the bluntest parts of the body, I think, besides the head. And, el and elbows tend to be a little bit sharper, but yeah, knees are like if any if if you've ever watched MMA, if someone really gets knocked out, they either get caught by a punch, or they or they eat a knee right to the chin, and knee to chin, immediate lights out. Uh, so there's that. Um, eventually, the uh, Wardlow goes to the outside. He needs to catch his breath on the outside. He F10s, and why well, well, just steal a move, and you might as well steal a knee. But one of the F10s, uh, Jungle Boy, back into the ring. They go back in the ring. Jungle Boy gets F10 in the ring. Wardlow won. A little surprising. It wasn't a, you know what, I'm going to upgrade this a little bit. 
this this wasn't that bad of a match. I think it's because of the opening match, and I kind of caught. Oh, there goes a hobo cat. But because it was that opening match, and I missed a little bit of it because I got back from the gym a little bit late. And hey, you know what? I'll upgrade it. This is a cheeseburger match. Then I went to take a shower, and while I missed a squash match. Squash matches are so rare, they're so few and far between. Uh, I was Kenny Omega taking on Sunny Kiss. This was a squash match. This was done in the five minutes from when they went to break to when I got out of the shower. Yeah, and I'm like, well, I might as well make dinner then. But yeah, this was a squash match. Kenny Omega advances. It was a squash match, probably deservedly so. Um, Sunny Kiss, by no means of the imagination, should ever be in a world, world world title hunt. Should not be in the TV title hunt. He should be absolutely wrecked by Brian Cage if he ever goes after the FTW belt. Maybe by fluky win he gets a run with the tag belt. He's gonna be that kind of jobber. That beats jobbers. This made sense for Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega's turning a new page because of their creativeness. Not so much the fact that it was a squash, but squash matches are really rare, especially Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega has built a reputation in AEW, kind of the way Cody's going, where he's making someone underneath him look a lot stronger. Like he had. I forget who it was against, but it was like a 15-minute match. Everyone's going, boo, Kenny Omega. This shall not have lasted this long. This is good that it didn't last long. This actually, in my estimation, is a cheeseburger match. More so because of the storyline. It just made sense, though. Then we have a Kingston recap about what happened. He goes on a little rant. Um, Tony then tries to, to tries to talk to Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy is like, yeah, I'll talk about that in Cincinnati. It's like, we're not going to Cincinnati. It's like, whatever. And you just see Tony. Tony has amazing facials. It just looked like Tony legitimately wanted to punch Orange Cassidy in the face. Then Cody speaks with Dasha about giving Orange Cassidy a rematch. Yeah. There was more Eddie Kingston. Eddie Kingston's still good on the mic. How Moxley betrayed him. Um, he left CZW. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to leave CZW? Except for the hate club. Because I hate you. Again, I think the hate club, I still think, and it makes sense, the age is about right, that they were like, the jobbers in like WCW that you just wanted to see get squashed, they'd come out, hype up the crowd, tell the crowd, I hate you. Then the nasty boys would show up and like destroy them, and the crowd would go absolutely bonkers. Or like the Steiner brothers would come out, destroy them. Actually, probably before the Steiner brothers, the Varsity Club would destroy them. The Legion of Doom would destroy them. The Hate Club. Because I hate you. They would defeat like, like on like they'd be like the fourth match in for a tag team event, and like they would like have a semi-competitive match against like Mike Powers and and Jay Hildenbrand, like like two people, like who? Just to say yeah, just to build them up to be destroyed, wrecked by the Nasty Boys. Again, that was that back then. Or it'd be like the Fabulous Boys. Um, who else was back there? WCW. Legion of Doom, Nasty Boys, the Freebirds would probably wreck them. Um, again, Varsity Club, Harlem Heat, the Stein, eventually the Steiner Brothers. Uh, any kind of named or known tag team in WCW. Yeah, they would just get wrecked by. But again, if they had to face like the real jobbers, like um, Mike Iron 
and 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 Jake Treadwell. Yeah, you knew it was going to happen. So it was it was it was, it was good. Um, that's how King, again Kingston. Again, you married your wife. You went to sports entertainment. You turn your back on me. Whoa. If if he would have said you married that blonde haired Canadian woman that you met being a sports entertainer, I think he said something like that. Wow. That would make me respect Eddie Kingston more. Gringo killer for all. Uh, so then the next match, this was actually somewhat disappointing, only because I've seen him in action before. I think both in triple A. And in Lucha Underground, uh, I think I think they even had a match or two in, in CMLL and an Impact. When you start to see wrestlers in that particular frame and with in that particular light that you've seen before in other organizations, and Lucha Underground just said, "Wrestle, listen, storyline, Pentagon." You're a dark person. You like to break arms. Ray Phoenix, you're a good guy. You're upset that said bad guy is breaking people's arms. Fight. And then eventually uh, Phoenix got, got changed once he got his arm broken. Um, so again, that led to a good whole storyline. And Lucia Underground was more story-driven, but they let the wrestlers wrestle. Which, and they didn't have that s any set style. It was whatever the wrestlers wanted to do. They just said, "Hey, this is your storyline. Make it so in the ring. Make it so." Uh, so this was kind of disappointing. Only really for that reason. If you've ever seen their matches in Lucha Underground, it's a lot faster paced. This was kind of slow. Again, uh, Ray Phoenix and Pentagon Junior. The, the Lucha Brothers are actually brothers in real life. Uh, Phoenix, again, he opens the rows for Pentagon. The show of respect. Good stuff. Open up pretty good. Um, very technical. They, they, they shook hands like like brothers. Like uh, like any typical face versus face match should. Uh, very technical start. Arm locks, reversals. The counters and reversals and rope running was, was absolutely amazing. It started to get a little bit sloppy towards the match. Um, uh, after Ray Phoenix hit like some jumping, spinning splash off the top rope, that was utterly amazing. Uh, Phoenix tried to uh, run the ropes, but Pentagon Jr. knew that too well. And the whole story behind this is the two wrestlers knew each other so well from being a tag team and being brothers, they could counter each other's moves. They knew what was they knew what each other was going to do before the other or while the other was going to perform that. So that's really good to see. Um, then it just started a brawl, the kicks to the face. Uh, when Phoenix try, tried a, a handspring something off the apron, that was amazing. Um, it got a little bit sloppy. Um, this match, oh yeah, the kind of you could tell like it was amazing. Um, the weird throw through the top rope, up the top rope they go, Spanish fly from the top rope. Oh, should be the finisher all the time, but I do like the finisher they gave this match. There's an amazing pop-up power power bomb. Actually, this match wasn't that botchy. Now that I think about it, and there were some spots that it, it just seemed to be slow and dragging. They did do a trade of chops. Ouch! I never want to get hit by an open palm chest slap by either of these two professional wrestlers. There would be a hand mark and uh, on my chest for like two months. Um, Pentagon did the arm breaker. Phoenix kind of barely saw that because he did a flippy. He did some weird, amazing looking flippy Canadian destroyer. It wasn't even a Lucha destroyer. This was a pure out flippy Canadian destroyer. That was the match. Uh, Ray Phoenix wins. It was good. It, to me, it just seemed a slower pace. Than what I'm used to these two seeing. It might be my own bias. Again, when you see them in Lucha Underground, they're so fast. AAA has such a frenetic pace. CMLL doing everything fast, 100% all the time. Here they look very a little bit more methodical. Um, even in Lucha Underground, it was methodical, but it was still a fast pace. 
This was methodical, but kind of a more slow pace. Uh, again, it might be my own opinion. I'll say this was a good match, though. It was a still a cheeseburger match. Yeah, it's really hard to screw up a cheeseburger. Um, then we have the Dark Order. John Silver's the best. John Silver's as... <laughs> As Jim Ross says, had too much Mountain Dew in his system. John Silver, no more caffeine for you. Lay, lay off. You have to go on a strict diet of black cherry soda, sir. Black cherry soda, no caffeine. Pure and utter deliciousness. And there goes my camera. Um, next match, again, qualifying match. So we have one, two. Wait, do we have a fourth? Oh, yeah, one, two, three, four. So this is the fourth qualifying match. You have Cole Cabana taking on Hagman, Adam Page. Again, this was good. Kind of a slow pace. You can see Cole Cabana wanting to go with that indie style. Hagman, Adam Page is still a more proficient wrestler, I think. Cole Cabana, if he's allowed to be, he is one of the most entertaining wrestlers ever. The matches between him and Delirious, I don't care what people say i don't care how, how goofy jim Cornette says there are i don't care what dave Meltzer says colt cabana and delirious matches you'll be utterly entertained forever the the athletics the athleticism um the in-ring storytelling the in-ring antics it all meshes um however when you take colt cabana out of that particular situation he, he doesn't thrive as much he just becomes an another wrestler who looks like he's trying too hard to, to be funny to have some comic relief with delirious the two of them could play off each other the hangman adam page wasn't playing um go match starts off the tie up into the arm ringer and pretty obvious stuff uh colt he tried some jokey stuff yeah for, for all that he eats a slap to the face um yeah and then some chops those chops by the page are pretty good for the most part again it was a really good technical match there's nothing i could really wreck from this match um there were good spots it was a very methodical pace again with cole cabana i understand why it would be a methodical pace he's been wrestling for 21 21 years or, or, or 20 plus years, however long it is, uh, 22 years, something something to that effect. 20 plus years professional. Hangman and Page has, has been around for a while. I, I I mean, this is not his his first rodeo. He learned kind of in the more New Japan style, again with Ring of Honor. Um, again, much more sports-based match, whereas Cole Cabana kind of came through the Chikaras, Pro Wrestling Gorillas. Um, uh, had had a stint in Ring of Honor, but always with Ring of Honor, you knew he was a popcorn match. So, yeah, it's, it's, this is one of those few times where the difference, the clash of styles, or the difference in styles kind of clashes. So it doesn't mix well. It doesn't say, hey, you have this lucha person trying to go fast. You have this big bruiser person trying to go slow. <laughs> Whose style is going to perform? going to be there this kind of didn't go that way um again they did the yay booze Cole command eventually gets this uh 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 oh atomic elbow the way only Colt cabana can again an, an homage to dust the road sweetheart um the delayed german suplex by page was good let Cabana think about it when he picked him up. Cabana hit that Superman splash from the apron to the floor. That was good. That was kind of risky. I, I love how he does that. He got back in the ring, went for a second Superman splash. Uh, Page got out of the way, though. Page had a great pop of power bomb. Again, it was pretty good. Um, then Cabana goes for the Superman clutch. He only gets a two count. Uh, Page went for a buckshot lariat. Cabana kind of ran right towards him and said, nope. Not gonna happen. Um, on the other side of the ring, Page did it, except for the, he, did, he did the fake version, and that made Cole Cabana tuck and run a little bit. 
And then as soon as he came back, because, of course, Cole Cavana said he had, had to be a little bit smarter. Not really. He got faked out. And Hangman and Page hit the buckshot lariat. Um, he did not do the other finisher, which is like that weird reverse tombstone from the back. So Hangman and Adam Page wins. The, the good news, bad news is that we're going to see probably Hangman, Adam Page, and Kenny Omega go for that number one contender spot. It's both good and bad because it's going to be a good match. I don't care what people say. This is going to be probably, a, unless something really screwy happens, this is going to be a good match. The bad news is it's a predictable match. You could have guessed that this would happen based on the roster. So, again, this was a good match. It was a good cheeseburger match. Then we have the, the Dark Order come out. They help Colt Cavana. Uh, Sammy Guevara does a little recap. Taz, he's there with Cage and Sparks. Uh, MJF and, and Chris Dinner have, have a dinner. It's a stake off and dance off. They drop their dance partner on what looks to be a concrete floor. Whoa. And and and, and wait a second. Like, I hope those girls were tested for, for STDs. I mean coronavirus. Because they weren't wearing masks or anything. So yeah. You're gonna like that 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 look this whole segment between MJF and Chris Jericho looked hokey. I do appreciate the fact that they try to like like outstake each other. It's like I'll have the porter, I'll have the twenty ounce porter house steak, medium well. The other one said, "I like the the baked potato," and of course, and Jeff and Lynn, well, I'll have the twenty ounce porter house steak, medium rare, with the side of grilled asparagus, and. This is one of those segments I heard it best. It probably went like five minutes too long. Then they get into a, a sing and dance routine. Ugh. Not really a fan of that, mainly because it's these two. I understand kind of trying to outclass each other for the steak, making it sound classier. I'll have a glass of red wine. Oh, I'll have some of your French. Burgundy, or oh, you know what? I'll change. I'll, you know what? Make my red wine a fine Merlot. So they're trying to outclass each other, and then then they break into a song and dance, and 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 yeah, that's that's when I tuned out. And if you want to hear about me really tuning out, I don't care who it is, Britt Baker. I might always tune her out. Uh, Jim Cornette has. Various rules he does when he watches women's wrestling. He has the Rhea Ripley rule. He will always watch a Rhea Ripley match. He will always watch Tony Storm's match. Uh, every other match he kind of like either fast forwards through or skips. I might have to do that with Britt Baker. Um, first of all, Tony couldn't get Rebel's name right because he kept on calling her Reba. Of course, Reba, that's, that's, or I think he called her Remy once too. Of course, that's Matt Hardy's wife. So Tony's getting confused. T Tony actually broke out laughing in like the next segment. I'll get to that. That was a funny moment. But yeah, Britt Baker versus Kylie King. Again, if you're going to make your wrestlers look strong, don't have them fall victim to a wrist lock in the opening parts of a match from a tie up. Um, Kylie King actually looked better. Then Britt Baker minus Britt Baker minus the finishing at, um, moves of the match. Uh, Kylie King probably held about 50. I'll say about it was 60 40. Kylie King again. Um, Kylie King she, she knows how to wrestle basic stuff. Uh, Britt Baker at the step over toe hold. Um, she was doing the Muay Thai clinch in the knees. Then there was. And, and this has been happening a lot with Britt Baker. There's always one really obvious botch. And this was a kick spot, and it, it, it just didn't look good. It looked obvious. It looked poor. Um, 
I'm not necessarily going to bring Kylie King because she tried um, to, to make up for it. Uh, Britt Baker looked a little flustered at it. Again, if you're going to botch, um, you either want to make fun of yourself for it, um, such as when table stone breaks or when you fall off the top rope, you yell top rope, it's your fault. Um, or you kind of wrestle through it. You just keep on going. You don't go You don't go right back to the well, but you might hit that spot a little bit later. But when you want to get that botch out of memory, you want to say, say okay, screw this. Irish whip into corner, punches, um, rope run, duck, duck, clothesline. And then eventually we'll tussle outside, and then eventually we'll go for this again. But again, after... All that stuff has happened. Um, Britt Baker, again, she has a couple moves. She obviously learned the sling bl single blade from Adam Cole, baby! Um, finish up with a fisherman's neck breaker, then the... Um, yeah, something move. I don't even care what it was. Then she put in the lockjaw. Yeah, that was it for Kylie King. Again, I, Kylie King, and again, Jim Cornette has talked about female wrestlers. Kylie King looks like a female wrestler. She has the bigger body build. She seems a little bit more muscular. She's a little bit taller than Britt Baker, a little bit wider than Britt Baker, a little bit thicker. Um, definitely not fat, but she looks toned. She's in shape. Britt Baker just looks like she looks thin. And now I think she's trying to put on weight the hard way because now it looks like she has a little tummy going. But it's not necessarily complimentary of, of her body type. Um, she just looks thin. She just looks like a very thin girl. Um, Britt Baker looks like she just went from 95 pounds to like, a, like a 100 pounds. Um, Kylie King looks... Like a, she looks like a woman. Yeah. Hey, Kylie King. I'm single. So yeah. Um. I don't know. I just it doesn't do it for me. This is a soup match. And then let's see here. Then there was Darby Allen. here yeah so we had darby allen and hopefully i got my camera back up to sync darby allen and steve-o heated a um body bag drop down from a skate park ramp this looked like something out of jackass i can see jim Cornette's critique darby allen is very cinematic he needs to figure out how to do a speaking promo. Because when he talks, it just seems like there's some disconnection. Um, again, this was very short. Even even uh, Sparks had kind of a spotchy promo, but he said it with such conviction. You're like, oh, oh, well, maybe he maybe he slipped up. Again, I slip up all the time when I have to like. Um, uh, do you have any assets such as such? When, when you have to put like a bunch of consonants together, um, for me, my issue is when I have to put a lot of s's together. Uh, it kind of slurs into so uh, so miss. Do you have any assets and savings? And and it just if I go through it and overthink it, it just kind of sounds weird. If I say it in a more natural conversation, it's just you get tongue tied, and that's understandable. But when it seems overly scripted, it's just unnatural sounding. And to me, again, this is just my opinion. Um, that's how Darby Allen sounds. He's he's a good wrestler. They they he has he has his gimmick. He knows his gimmick. He just hasn't sold people on okay why do you want to do this they, 
they they do that on jackass and ridiculousness is this who you are and if you are you're gonna lose a lot of people that way or at least mainly like older people that'll be like yeah we've we've, we've seen that before more entertaining places whatever so yeah it is what it is then we had a four team tag match to determine who's going to face ftr at full gear um i have to find a I have to find a Metal Gear thing for that. Um, yeah, because I think the last full gear. I think that was the one I tried. That was the one I tried to live stream and I got zonked for. Yeah, I learned my lesson. Um, so with this, you have the Butcher and the Blade versus the Dark Order of um, Silver and the other guy. Uh, S- Private Party. I can't believe you have to take a see this is how, how how messed up I am. I put down street party. No, it's street profit. It's the street profit and private party, not street party. So yeah, I just get I'm confused. First is a young bucks. Again, pop up, the, pop up the Young Buck shirt. Uh, this is actually pretty fun. Uh, it was a bunch of uh, kip hops. Uh, <laughs> the the Bucks try to try to have a super kick party with street party in the ring, but no, it's the Bucks eat a super kick party. So that was good to see. Then all eight men get in the ring. <laughs> I think it's Matt Jackson. Oh, by the way, I was researching something and I couldn't believe it. There was someone who, um, yeah, was like the father of someone from Rancho Cucamundo. And I saw that, I'm like, wait a second. I've heard of people from that place. (laughs) There actually is the Rancho Cucamundo, California. Wow. I was, I was kind of half shocked, half blown away. I'm like, there is a place like that. Rancho Cucamundo. I just thought the Bucks made it up. Wow. I'm sorry, Bucks. I, I, I've been humbled. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. But yeah, that was funny. When I saw someone else come from Rancho Cucamundo, California, I'm like, wait a second. The Young Bucks come from Rancho Cucamundo, California. So, yeah, I was shocked. That was just, That was just too funny at the time. Um, so yeah, uh, I think it's Matt Jackson. He's Road Warrior Buck. Um, and, and the Blade trade yay boo. Yeah, that's right. Matt Jackson trades the yay boos. Um, Quinn gets in, beats up the Dark Order. Both of them, uh, private party, they just start to fly. Again, amazing shooting star press. Almost missed, but probably got enough of them where it looked pretty good. Um, <sighs> JR was so funny. I don't know if he did it on purpose. He's like, yeah, that boy John Silver, he does too much Mountain Dew. He's a little too hyper. And and uh, with that, um, Excalibur said something, and you get your Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Tony just started laughing. Either that, or he's coughing up whatever he was drinking. That was that. That was funny. That was a that was a bravo, Jim Ross. You made to- Tony Giovanni crack up. Jim Ross, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Um, back in the ring, yeah, John Silver's all dude up. Way too much caffeine. That was funny. Uh, private party hit the silly string. Then they did a hearty party. Uh, Butcher and Blade, they did the full death. The Bucks break that up. Kind of the whole theory of this match is that any time that a team went for the pin, for the most part, the other team... Mainly the Young Bucks would break it up. Um, uh, Balding Buck begins to clean the house. That's Nick Jackson, I believe. Uh, the Butcher eats a super kick. They try to melt her driver sent on combo. That actually looked pretty cool. Uh, Nick uh, Matt Jackson's in the ring doing doing Road Warrior Buck and Balding Buck Nick Jackson. B 
begins to pull everyone off the ring so no one can make a tag. They did a Meltzer drival to a roll-up, and then they reversed that into his own roll-up. The Young Bucks win. They'll face FTR. But the belts, I'll tell you what, this was actually pretty good, mainly because of the antics of, of Jim Ross and Tony Schiavone. It's almost... It's honestly almost like Jim Ross was bored and just, in his own way, ribbed Tony Schiavone. And it just worked so perfectly. Again, Jim Ross, bravo, sir. Bravo. Um, and the FCR comes out. And then they get then the Young Bucks get jumped by FTR. And the timekeeper comes out, who is Tully Blanchard. They do the chair spot with the ankle trying to break um, Balding Buck's leg because he can't break the leg of War Road Warrior Buck. I'll tell you what, I was going to give this a cheeseburger, but I was entertained by it. It was good. Um, no teams actually look bad. The Butcher and Blade, they didn't get pinned. The Dark Order, they can... At least the Butcher and Blade and Dark Order can say, hey, we did not get pinned. We didn't lose the match. So that's good. So that's... Uh, holds on. Um, the only, My only takeaway from this, uh, again, was predictable. Should be a good match for Full Gear. Predictable match for full gear, though. Yeah, this was a surf and turf match. And that was AEW. Um, actually, a pretty good show. Again, entertaining. Just goes by so fast. With the exception of that whole Chris Jericho, MJF segment. And, 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 Brit, and Brit whoever. And Brit skinny woman. Yeah, whatever. Um, generally I don't like to date big women, but I'll, I'll tell you what, I just want to date like a real natural woman. So yeah, Kylie King, I'm the man. Um, and that's it. Um, tomorrow I think it's going to be Dr. Tom's going to come over. He's going to give a lecture about who's going to win for Bound for Glory and uh, Hell in a Cell. I've just learned through various friends of mine that there's going to be no NXT pay-per-view next Sunday for Halloween. So that's going to get Halloween off. So that means there's only going to be one show for Halloween. They're doing the Halloween Havoc on like a regular TV show, which is kind of disappointing. Um... I think they only announced the one match for NXT. And yeah, NXT, NXT is fun. It's one of those shows, I hate to say this, NXT is becoming like baseball. Baseball is a fun sport to watch in person. It goes a lot quicker when you're at the game. There's a little bit more interactions. I don't know what's going to happen with the minor leagues next year with God knows there's going to be the, the, the Helio 27B virus. It's going to take the place of COVID-19. Um, they're just going to ban all sports. Um, I'll be forced to, to wear a... Uh, I'll be forced to make a loincloth out of Chuck Taylors and Sperry shoes at work and hunt lizards and sparrows um, and go all Mad Max or... While at home, my, my cat thinks he's in the hunger. She that she's part of the Hunger Games. So yeah, who knows what's gonna happen next year? But NXT is becoming that kind of show where when you watch it on TV, it's meh. When you go see it live, it's a, it seems like a whole different show. Again, that's just my opinion. Again, you can also see. Well, go this way. By the wall, the door of wrestling. But I do like NXT. It's just sometimes it's so bland. Um, I hope when NXT does come back to the Daytona Beach, that Shotzi, Dri Shotzi Blackheart drives her little toy tank down the, down the Tangerous Plaza area. That would be cool. Other than that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. So tomorrow is going to be some predictions. We'll have Dr. Tom here. Friday's going to be SmackDown. Um, I don't know what's still going to happen Saturday. 
Saturday, it's I'm either going to a concert or I'm going to watch Bond for Glory. I have to get in touch with people and see what they really want to do. Um, Saturday, I'm not big in traveling because I work late. Although I did find out I have Veterans Day off. So I'm kind of happy about that. And then Sunday is going to be Hell in a Cell. And then it's a normal week. I like normal weeks. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye.